The UK government has delayed a gasoline car ban to 2035. What's going on here? Well, first of all, Ford Motor Company says they categorically oppose the UK's changes to this gasoline car ban. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, first of all, welcome to our new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. This year's been crazy because EVs have been blowing up. Technology has been blowing up. The UK said it would ban all cars that weren't EV only in 2030. It's now changed its mind. Well, the government in the UK, to be fair, has been a bit of a shambles over the past couple of years. So I'm not really that surprised, but here's what has happened. And realistically, here's what I think will happen as a result of this change. The ban on gasoline and diesel powered vehicles, and of course, hybrids, would have been enacted in 2030. But months after suggesting that the United Kingdom's ban on gasoline and diesel powered cars may not go ahead as planned, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has announced that the ban will be pushed back to 2035. Uh, and this is actually in line with the European Union. Prime Minister Rishi has announced that the extension has been implemented to give the country more time to transition to EVs. The United Kingdom still has a kind of an automotive workforce. They do still manufacture cars there. Not a whole lot, but they do make some and parts as well. He said, you'll still be able to buy a combustion engine vehicle until 2035. Now, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know that um, that's actually the case. So it's a bit of a weird claim to make, if you ask me. Maybe he should have said it'll still be legal to buy one, not you'll still be able to, because it depends on what car manufacturers are offering. Maybe car manufacturers will work out in 2034 that no one wants gasoline or diesel. In fact, that's very likely. The Prime Minister added that the government is working hard to make the UK a leader in electric vehicles. I mean, try not to laugh when you hear that. Anyway, and he said that, the island nation has attracted billions in investments. BMW, for example, has invested more than 750 million into the Oxford-based mini factories where the new electric Cooper hardtop three-door will be produced. Now, we've seen the recent specs for the new mini Cooper. To be fair, they're not particularly impressive. But anyway, it's good to hear production of this EV is happening in the UK. He said... I expect by 2030, the vast majority of cars sold will be electric because the costs are reducing. The range is improving. The charging infrastructure is growing. And on those actual points, I think the Prime Minister is right on the ball. I also think, at least for now, it should be you that makes that choice, not the government forcing you to do it. Because the upfront cost is high. Is it? Well, that depends, really. Anyway, we've got further to do to get the charging infrastructure in place, added Sumac. Steve Reid, who is the Environment Secretary for the Opposition Party, criticised the delay and said Labor remained committed to keeping the 2030 internal combustion ban. Reid said that the Prime Minister had sold out the biggest economic opportunity of the 21st century. Now, the opposition leader here does have a point. He's trying to say the UK should take advantage of this disruption and try to pivot as quickly as possible, and that by extending this delay that it will hurt the economy. However, opponents from the automotive industry show support for the government's decision. Jaguar Land Rover, who don't have any EVs at all, so that's probably why they support it. Other than the I-Pace, which is basically a dead car, they sell in minuscule numbers, called the delay from the Prime Minister pragmatic. While Ford's UK chair, Lisa Branken, said, we need policy focus trained on bolstering the EV market in the short term and supporting consumers while headwinds are strong. Infrastructure remains immature, tariffs loom, and the cost of living is high. However, Ford themselves said they oppose this change. They believe that, that the UK should have stuck to their original plan to ban internal combustion in 2030. The Prime Minister said that the 2035 ban brings the United Kingdom in line with the European Union and other regions such as California and Washington. The UK's combustion ban is part of the government's 2050 net zero goal. But the Prime Minister believes this can still be achieved without burdening the population with impractical policies. Now, what do you think on this? Do you think this policy is impractical? Do you think banning internal combustion 
in six and a half years from now, not existing cars, from selling new versions of internal combustion in 2030. Do you think that's a bad idea or a good idea? Let me know in the comments. The test should be, do we have the fastest cuttable path to reach net zero by 2050 in a way that brings people with us? Since I've been Prime Minister, I've examined our plans and I don't think they meet that test. Sunak also noted that existing gas and diesel powered vehicles would still be allowed to be sold as used vehicles after 2035. The ban only applies to new cars. The government is still considering implementing the so-called Aston Martin exemption. This means low volume manufacturers such as Aston Martin, who sell only internal combustion vehicles, would have extra time to switch to EVs. I personally don't think anyone's going to want a non-electric Aston Martin in 2035, 12 years from now. The reason for that is basically what Dodge have said. They've said internal combustion is slow. It's old. It's basically dinosaur technology. Anyway, the European Union has a similar concession for automakers selling fewer than 1,000 vehicles annually. It's thought that maybe Ferrari or Lamborghini will use that exemption to continue manufacturing gasoline-powered cars after 2035. Personally, I think all of this is a moot point. It makes no difference what the UK says, no difference whatsoever. They kind of their own uh, view on their own importance is probably beyond reality here. What do I mean by that? Well, the UK doesn't dictate the car market worldwide. In fact, the UK has almost no say on the cars that are manufactured. I mean, the UK car market is way too small to be a significant force in dictating global car manufacturing choices by big companies like who? BYD, right? Tesla. Do these companies care what the UK does? No, they don't care. Do they want to sell cars in the UK? Of course they do. But the truth is, when you make a car, you don't make it for the UK market. You make it for a global car market. If you don't do that, you're an idiot. You lose money. You go bankrupt, right? So General Motors, are they going to make a car for the UK specifically? UK only model? No, of course not. So here's my point. Around 75 million cars are sold every year. The majority of those are sold where? UK? No. Europe, China, and the United States. So if Europe, China, and the US as a whole move to EVs quickly because the declining price of batteries will mean EVs will be cheaper to buy by 2030, it doesn't really matter what the UK says or does, makes no difference. The point is here, we've already hit 21% EV market share in across the whole of Europe. Germany has just hit 32%. The Netherlands, 33%. Norway, 85%. By 2030, it's game over. It doesn't matter what governments say anywhere because it will be cheaper to make any kind of car electric in 2030 and they'll be far superior in every way. Yeah, there might be a couple of old dudes who don't want to make the change. It doesn't really matter what they do, though. What matters is the global car market. And really, China, more than any other place in the world, will be dictating that. Because China is exporting more cars than any other country in the world. In fact, China's 28 million car sales per year, more than one in every three cars sold worldwide, is sold in China. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.